Uh, I am Angelica McGee with the Samuel Proctor Oil History Program, interviewing with Alexandra Leon. And we are interviewing Jerry Mincy. First question How did you first hear about the Florida Folk Festival? I started writing Florida songs, and I went to another festival thinking that I was going to be very unique and one of a kind. And I found out there was a whole genre of people writing Florida music, songs about Florida. Uh, my good friend Frank Thomas, who is no longer with us, invited me to come up here to this festival, and that was in uh, 1999, I think, maybe 2000. And I uh, played on his gazebo stage, and he put me on the main stage that night. And uh, 23 years later, I'm still here as a book performer and also as a volunteer. So tell us about your first experience at the festival. I was totally in awe. I'd heard about it, and I had visions of what it was at the festival and what it was going to be. And, and I really wasn't prepared for what I, what I really encountered at the festival. It was beautiful. The people were friendly, and through the years have become like family. Uh, the, the Florida Folk Festival is, is an integral part of Florida culture, I believe. And uh, it, I think it's imperative that we, we help it to continue. The festival isn't doing great right now, I don't think. Uh, we need to get more young people involved in it and keep it going. Tell me about your first performance at the festival. Well, my first performance was on the gazebo stage. It was what they called the Frank and Ann Thomas stage. And it was all Florida songs. Still is. It's still operating. I'm playing there tomorrow, as a matter of fact. Uh, you do all Florida music. I was scared to death. I had, uh, in the 60s, I'd been a rocker. I'd been in rock and roll bands, but I was with five or six other people. Uh, this was really my first experience being a solo performer. And I was scared. And, but just the love from the audience, uh, they reached out to me and it was a lot of fun and people liked my songs and that was really important to me. How would you describe the community of musicians who write about Florida? I think that, uh, and, and there are a lot of people that write Florida songs that aren't from Florida and I think that's absolutely fine. Uh, some of the old timers here would say, you know, we got too many people writing about birds and rivers. We need to write about Florida. Ah, that's not true. I think that uh, anybody that loves Florida, whether they're a native, I'm fifth generation Florida, whether they're a native like me or my music partner, Tony Macaluso, is from Long Island, New York. He writes Florida songs. So I think it's, uh, I think it's good that, that people do that and love the state enough. And the, the state is changing. The, the first song I ever wrote, I wrote it for a humanities project. I was back in college. And it was called A Changing Land. And uh, that's, what we, that's what we're living in today as a changing land. Florida's not what it was. And I think as a songwriter and a sort of a historian, it's, it's my duty, and other people's too, to remind people of what Florida was and the history and the legacy that we have. What are some traditions you have when you come to the festival? Say it again? Some traditions you have? Mm. Of course, camping is, is the biggest tradition. Uh, that's always fun. The, the jams in the campground at night. I went to bed at one o'clock this morning. I drank some moonshine. <laughs> we played a lot of music. My fingers are sore from playing all night. Uh, I think that's the, the biggest and best because you're with people that, that you know and some of them you don't know. You make new friends. I make new friends every year when I come up here. And by the time the festival is over, they're old friends. So who do you look forward to seeing the most every year from these like friends and things like that? Uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing old friends that I don't see, except here. And some of the performers that, that are on stage here, I look forward to seeing them every year. I look forward to hearing new music, new stories. Uh, I like to watch them dance. I'm not a dancer, but the concert dances are a ton of fun. Uh, we have a lot of 
traditional old time music groups here, which isn't my type of music, but it's, it's, I like it. I like it. I like fiddle music and guitar music. So there are a number of things that I look forward to. I miss the, the Carillion. I miss the bells in the tower. I, that's something that I don't know what the answer is. I'm not that deeply involved in the, in the park itself, but I know the bells haven't worked for this is the third year, I think. And it's an expensive project, and we need to we need to get them ringing again. That's part of it. It's something I really miss up here, and that's always been part of the tradition for me. What songs would be in the Florida like folk family songbook? Ah, uh, Frank Thomas's songs. Frank Thomas wrote over six hundred songs about Florida. Uh, he was the the so-called godfather of Florida folk music. Some people say it was Will McLean. It was Frank Thomas. He wrote a lot of a lot of Florida songs. Cracker, old Cracker Cowman. A lot of people don't understand what a what a Florida cracker is, and there have been you know bad connotations to the word. Uh, but it's it's an honor to be a to be a cracker. It's it's what it amounts to. Uh, my my record label is Cracker Soul. Uh, but uh, songs like that, uh, people like me, I write songs about characters, about the history. I write funny songs, I write side songs. I've got a song called Arbuckle Water. It's about my great uncle Toby, who was a moonshiner, and he was killed at his moonshine still in Polk County. Uh, those are the kinds I write a lot of family songs, but based on Florida history. and. Uh, those are the kind of songs that, that people like and they like to hear and they like to hear stories. I'm a storyteller. I'm a musical storyteller, which a lot of songwriters are. Uh, if you had to create a Florida Folk Festival family motto, what would it be? <laughs> That's a hard one. <laughs> a motto for the Florida Folk Festival. Uh, Music, dance, and love. Could you tell us about a memorable time at the campground? Uh, Frank Thomas, who I've already mentioned, uh, and his friend Bobby Hicks, who is no longer with us also, but was a great Florida songwriter, they would ride around at night on a golf cart and hide in the bushes to see if people were playing Florida music. and. That's the way a lot of the old timers thought about this festival, that it was a Florida festival. It should be Florida music. Florida. Not true, not true. We see the diversity we have in this festival this year, the Caribbean people, African people, and they're Florida people, and this is the Florida Folk Festival. But that's what Frank and Bobby would do. Uh, you Right around, if you're, if you're not playing Florida music, you, you shouldn't be here. Nah, that's not right. <laughs> Can you tell me about someone you met at the festival who's had like a big influence on you or your music? Well, I've mentioned Frank Thomas and I hate to be repetitive about Frank, but Frank was uh, the most open-hearted, giving, unselfish person in the world. And what he did, he took people, newbies like me, and encouraged us to write Florida music, to write Florida songs. When I met him, I had written a few, and he knew I had the potential to be a Florida songwriter. But he encouraged me, but he'd take somebody he just met. What? You're a pretty good guitar player, can you write a Florida song? And that's what he would do. So he not only influenced me, but a, a whole bunch of people. So what is a typical day like for you at the festival? Uh, yesterday was fairly he hectic. I had usually I only have one set of music to play. Yesterday I had two, so I we got up and I made bacon and eggs for breakfast in my camp, and uh, we went on stage at the old marble stage. The old marble stage used to be the main stage of this festival, small stage, the old marble rocks, planks, whatever they are that compose the stage are still there, but that stage is just full of history and it gives me a 
gives me a feeling every time I walk up on it. But I played that. I played that at stage at 1130. Then at 3, I played at the Seminole Camp, which is an acoustic stage under a big chiqui. Uh And they have all the a lot of Seminole people from, from Brighton and uh, Big Cypress there doing crafts, beads, making little dolls. Last year, they cooked a huge garfish on an open fire pit. That garfish, I bet it was four or five feet long, and it was stuffed with vegetables. I never did get to taste it, but the Seminole Camp is, is a, a culture that's still alive in Florida, and uh, a lot of people that have never been exposed to it get to be exposed to the Seminole culture by going there. So, you know, that, that was a part of the day, and then, you know, you had to go back and relax a little bit. <laughs> Can you tell us more about, like, the food that's here? The what now? The food and like the different cultures. The food? Yeah. Uh, you know what? The vendors here, you know, you've always got barbecue. Uh, I, there's usually a Greek vendor here. Uh, but as far as the, the different cultures and the performers of different uh, races, ethnicity, uh, we don't get a lot of the food, actually. You know, uh, these mostly are vendors that go to festival to festival. That, that's the food we get up to, almost like a midway. So what's your favorite thing to do at the festival when you're not on the stage? I go and listen to other people play. I enjoy the music. I enjoy hearing the storytellers. Uh, we had a, a, an African dance group here last year, uh, like you bangers, they did their jumping up in the air dancing, and it was, it was so cool. And that's stuff that, that people don't get to experience that you do get to experience here. What valuable lessons have you learned from the festival family members you've made? I think acceptance is the biggest one, to accept people for what and who they are and to overlook any, anything that you might not overlook you know, in another, another setting. But I think it's the biggest for me is acceptance. Do you have any funny stories from the festival or any type of memory that you're fond of? <laughs> so many funny things have happened. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I really can't recall any right now. <clears throat> My partner, Tony Macaluso, of course, is a uh, second generation American from Garden City, Long Island, New York. So being a Long Island, New York Yankee, he's the butt of a lot of jokes in my crowd that, that we're crackers and we're, we're Southerners. And <laughs> so, so Tony catches, he's the butt of a lot of jokes, but he's a, a really sweet guy. We've been, we've been playing, to get, playing music together for 22 years and he's as far left as I am right. He's Catholic and I'm Protestant. We love each other as long as the day. <clears throat> Our love is based on music, but it's based on a, a mutual understanding and acceptance of each other. So how has your life been impacted by the festival since you started coming here? Well, it's something that I look forward to every year, like the majority of the people that have been playing this for a long time. Uh, as a musician, it's given me a certain notoriety uh, to say that I play the Florida Folk Festival. I've been playing it for 23 years, and people see that on my resume, and they say, this guy must be pretty good. Let's book him to play. And I'm getting a little bit older now, and I don't play as much as I used to, but I still enjoy it and have fun doing it. So that's kind of it. So let's see. What's the most rewarding part about playing? Uh, <clears throat> I wrote a song called Icho Chipko. It's a story of a, a Seminole warrior who came to, to Florida with his cousin Osceola. And uh, 
it's a it's a really good song. And I was in in a camp, and a young Seminole man came up to me. He was probably 19 or 20, and he said, "My name is Icho." He said, "Icho Tipko was my great grandfather." So, for me to write a song and then connect with somebody that knew somebody that I was writing about or was related to them, that that is the kicker for me. What are some of the most important lessons that you've learned from being at the festival? <sighs> Don't drive fast in the campground. <laughs> Don't try to steal somebody else's camp spot. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like I say, just be friendly and take people as they are and as you meet them, as you hear them, as you see them. That's it. Is there an achievement or contribution you've made that you would, that you're most proud of? Uh, my late wife and I contributed to the, to the park CSO for a number of years. Uh, we made a substantial donation every year, and I'm proud of that. And I've got the I've got the plaques on my music room wall to prove it. You know, uh, but it's been that's the thing that I hold very dear is that I've been a part of this festival to keep it going, monetarily as well as donating my time and talent. Is there any wisdom that you'd pass on to younger musicians who are interested in this type of music or they want to play here? We've got a lot of younger musicians playing in the state of Florida and nationally. Uh, and it's all music. All music is good, it's what Louis Armstrong said, music is music. Uh, I think they should keep playing, whether it's in a pop, rock, electric basses or acoustically, and I consider myself a, an acoustic musician, uh, they need to play. They need to keep playing. They need to practice. They need to get try to get gigs. And it's not like it was when I was a teenager. There were dances, and there were rock and roll bands all over. There would be five or six in every county. And we went to sock hops and dances at the teen center. It didn't really happen that much anymore. It's techno music, electronic music. You guys know, you're young. Uh, but there's definitely a place for the music that we do, whether it's on these stages or in stadiums. And people like music. Music is the common denominator. Music makes people feel good. And I think that's the the biggest reason that, that younger people should continue playing, besides just the fun of it. The, it's turned into a little bit of, of a job for me. I'm 76, so I'm not as young as I used to be. I say I'm in good shape, I still love to play, but uh, there's nothing like getting up on the stage and pouring out your sweat and tears and, and seeing the audience like it. Tell me the biggest reason you returned to the festival. I want to see the festival survive. I want to see it continue. And about the only way that I can do that myself personally is to donate my time and talent to do that. So that's, that's a big reason that I come back every year. And the other reason is to see people that I know and love and don't get to see them and sit down and, and play music with them at night and have a good time. What do you wish everyone knew about the festival? Say you're trying to get somebody to go for the first time. So what would you like wish that people knew about it? I wish that, uh, that people could, could get an idea of what this festival really is. The beauty of this park, for one thing, uh, Stephen Foster Park is absolutely gorgeous. We're right on the Swanee River. Uh, there's nothing like going down to the gazebo stage right on the river and uh, listening to music. Uh, that would be the first thing that I, would, that I do tell people. You need to come to this park. It's huge. It's beautiful. Uh, you'll see storytellers. You'll see dancers. You'll see 
ethnic groups, you'll see Florida folk music, you'll see all kind of great stuff. The main stage on Friday and Saturday night and Sunday night, uh, bringing some top performers, uh, Billy Dean this year, Jim Stafford. Uh, so that's what I tell people, come enjoy, enjoy our culture, enjoy what, what Florida is and be a part of it. What values would you like to hand down to younger festival family members and those to come? What values? Mm hmm. hmm. Y'all are asking me hard questions. <laughs> uh, be true to yourself to begin with. Uh, if you want to come to the festival just to be a, uh, an onlooker, an audience member, that's great. If you want to come and and play music or be a storyteller, do that. But you need to, you need to do what makes you happy. And uh, I think that's the advice that I would give on that. In your own life, how have you seen like the culture or like the messages of the festival kind of translate outside of this like kind of like bubble, this sphere, this three day, you kind of like get away from the real world. How do you see that translate like in your life? I'm not sure I understand what you're asking me. Like, how would you say like the energy of the festival? How would you like see a connection like in your own life? Like how you interact with people or how you make your own music? Ah, that's interesting. I've never really thought about that. Uh, yeah, I think what this festival does for me as a songwriter, I listen to a lot of different people playing music and I get ideas for songs. So that's, that's one positive effect it has on me personally. Usually every year when I come home from the festival, I'll write two or three songs. Just melodies I've heard up here and somebody says a word or something. So that's been a positive influence on me personally. Um, are there any questions you wished I had asked that I didn't? No, I think you've done a great job. You, you've asked some I don't know if I gave really good answers to. Well, yeah, I mean, any last thoughts or? Any last thoughts or like questions or anything you want to say? No, uh, tell me a little bit about your project, what you're doing. Um, so we were just at, so we're from the Samuel Proctor Oral History Program at the University of Florida. And uh, we were asked to just come have people who've been here for a long time share their stories about the festival and I guess kind of give like a more personal uh, showcase of what it's like to be a part of the community here. Ah, cool. Well, I'm so glad that y'all came, and I'm glad that uh, Kim Rivers invited me to, to come up and talk with you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>